Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, it's your partner for Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluto channel. Today guys, I'm doing paid review 21QB15. Uh, this, this here is for... He's asked me not to use his name, but can we use his first name? Shane. Shane, Shane, Shane. Uh, hi Archie, I came across your panel last... Four. Thank you. Quick whist watch check. I'm wearing the Milgau Sea Blue. Milgau Sea Blue. Hi Archer. Came across your channel last four and have been hooked ever since. The comedy is golden, but the honesty is priceless. Thank you so much. When you get your LV box painted, um, when you get your LV box painted, get the phrase, should a free collection put somewhere? I don't know. They can't paint that much. It's You're limited to three characters. As for me, I've been collecting watches since 2019 and I've developed a taste for less complicated, vintage, feeling, classic, dressier watches. I have one watch per brand collection, although I love vintage Rolex. So here... May come a day when the rule has to be broken. Indeed. Okie dokie. Now the, the oldest watch, the oldest watch still currently in the collection is a Rolex Explorer 2. A 16570 with polar dial. I got this used about two years ago, right before the birth of my first daughter. Without box or papers from a local luxury watch store. While I love both the 40 and the 42 Explorer 2s, the 40 remains more classic in design and proportions with more restrained aesthetic choices that add to the timelessness of the piece. Uh, next piece is a Omega Globemaster. I picked this up last year, pre-owned, complete with box and papers. I love the vintage inspiration in this watch. With the pipe hand dial and sharp fluted bezel, I had started eyeing down vintage watches early last year and considered picking up a vintage Constellation, but was concerned how a 33mm uh, might, might fit and was certainly extremely happy to realize there was a modern solution in the Globemaster. In the Globemaster, yes, 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 quite a, a nice, nice watch that. Next is the Grand Seiko SBGH263, which I also picked up last year. It was new but purchased on the grey market. I do think both Seiko and Grand Seiko have a problem with going overboard on some of their dials. This watch, however, doesn't have that problem. It has an ivory dial with the Zaratsu polished gold hands and indices. On paper, it looks fairly flat. But in person, the colors are warm and the polished numerals enrich the watch with detail. Earlier this year, I grabbed this vintage JLC, uh, I grabbed this vintage JLC club circa 1970s. Okay. Uh, the case is in excellent shape. Lugs are still sharp and it came with the original bracelet. The draw here is that uh, heavily patinaed tropical dial. I did have some concerns about the 35mm case, but haven't had any issue with the dimensions in person, but maybe I'm just too mesmerized with the dial to notice. I had been eyeing down vintage watches for a while and I'm happy to have picked uh, one up, but I definitely understood how now why so many in the watch community are leery of vintage pieces. I still like vintage watches, but I think I may be one and done with vintage unless the perfect piece happens to become available. My last and most recent purchase is the Tudor Black Bay Harrods Editions, a 41 mil Black Bay featuring Harrods Green Design Cudes. I've been sleeping on Tudor since I first got into the hobby, dismissing the brand as Rolex's little brother, but the muted olive green on the bezel immediately caught my attention. In person, they're toned down 
matte color, colored tool aesthetic and wind and wear, wind and wear design won me over. I did pay over retail as there is a waiting list uh, for this watch and I made peace with that knowing that where to go it picked up there would never be, be logistical travel costs in addition to the watch itself. Costs aside, I needed a watch I trusted to go to the beach pool and to do things in life. I dare not take a 20-year-old Explorer 2. The Black Bay instills confidence for these types of adventures on the wrist. So what do you think, Arch? I'm pretty content with where my collection is at today and feel as though all my watch needs are currently met. And while I do intend to sit on the collection as for a couple of years now, I do eventually want to get into some gold. I'm not into flashy watches, but there are just something about a gold watch that I find incredibly beautiful and timeless. As a, So a part of me is considering eventually flipping the steel Globemaster and picking up the gold Globemaster variant. I considered the steel Globemaster such a very versatile watch on the bracelet and with the tungsten carbon bezel. It goes well both in and out of the office, but what's the point of owning a watch that can do it all when you have a collection and ver watch variety? Horses for courses, right? What do you think of the Globemaster in precious metal for routine office wear and in the context of a collection? At this price range, I've considered looking at a Patek 5196 instead, but it's not really an everyday watch, I really love a 5396, but that's in a different price league. What would you do? And thanks, Arch, for the countless hours of entertainment. So let me let me let me just go through each of these pieces there. So let's firstly go with this collection here. What do I think? Well, the, the pick of the litter is the Explorer 2. I love Explorer 2s. 42 mil, it seems like a nice example. It's nice, uh, nice lugs on that there. Jugs, lugs. Um, it's quite a, it's quite an okay piece. So I think Explorer 2 is really a versatile GMT. They're becoming quite valuable, quite a bit of interest in the Explorer 2 Polar. Do I like the 42 or the 40 better? I've had both and I currently have a 42. I suppose I like the orange hand on the 42. I like the, I see you've got the solid end link, so that, that's a certainly a plus. The solid bracelet on the 42, I think, is a bit of a, it's, it's a great bracelet. But I think you're right. It, the 42 size does take a bit of getting used to. I'm not unhappy with the 42. But I do think, I do think the 40 is a great piece. So, so. That's certainly a great watch there. The next one is the Omega Globemaster. Omega Globemaster, they never really took off in the collecting phase. Absolutely amazing watch. The Globemaster was trying to beat Rolex at its own game. It's sort of a date just rival, you know, with a really chic dial and uh, it's it because because that's that's kind of what the Globemaster is there. Um, i got to be totally honest with you. I think it's a silly idea to be trading the Globemaster in. Resale prices haven't been great. Unfortunately, it's a soft model. And I think myself, instead of getting a gold Globemaster, why don't you keep the steel one and get a 5196? Because to buy a gold Globemaster uh, is absolute lunacy. Keep the steel and get a 5196. The whole point of a collection, as you say there. So, I, um, yeah, I kind of don't, uh, I don't approve of selling it. I like the Globe, I actually, you know, my favourite Globemaster is that blue, the bluey, bluey grey sort of dial. I thought that was, uh, you know, I must say, I, I like some of the Amigas there. I like the Aquaterra. They're kind of like a, a date just rival as well. Uh, I think the Globemaster is a great watch, but soft, 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 soft. Not really loved. Uh, then we got the Seiko. I mean, this is the problem with Grand Seiko. It's a Grand Seiko SBGH 263. I mean, <laughs> if they called it a Grand Seiko date just, or they gave it a more like a Pepsi or a, you know, it, it would really be cool. But SBG 1296. Different to 297, you know, it's just, 
it's kind of, you wonder why it's not successful. I've got to be totally honest with you. In the picture, it's kind of, uh, but, you know, in the flesh, the watch has an attention to level, a de attention to detail not seen in that price point. So I, I get it. I get it. I do really get it there. Um, I, yeah, it is a nice watch. It is a nice, nice genre of watch there. Then we got the vintage JLC. Um, it's not really my cup of tea. It's a day date. Um, yeah, not really. A bit seventies. I, I find you know they they produced a lot of mediocre stuff. Yeah, it, it's not really my cup of tea. I'm sorry. Then the Harrods. Um, look, I think that. I, i got to be totally honest with you. I don't know if I would have paid the extra for the Harrods. Yeah, the green is kind of nice, but I, I would have gone for a burgundy. I wouldn't have paid the extra. I would have, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't have done that. But now that you have, it's still a great watch. The Harrods, I don't, it, you know, I like the Boucher, the Boucher Blue. I like the blue, you know, that's kind of my favorite of those limited editions. So to answer your question, so what do you think, Arch? I think it's a nice collection. It's an enthusiast collection. It's a baby a mother could only love. You know, that's the... I kind of think the vintage JLC, mm, yeah, a bit of a letdown. The Grand Seiko, that's nice. The Globemaster, nice. Explorer 2, nice. I think it'd be this would be nice if you had a Tudor 58, Black Bay 58. I think it's kind of the monster, the monster in the range. I kind of kind of see a nice little, you know, it's kind of not, not little. These are not little pieces, but I think the Tudor could be a little I I think it would have gone better for a Black Bay 58. That's just my own opinion there. Uh you're pretty content. That's good. Very good idea there. Uh I wouldn't be flipping the Globemaster. They're kind of toxic. You're going to lose out. Buy a 5196. I own a 5196, and I tell you, man, that is one of the coolest wristwatches on planet Earth. Cool as a cucumber. It's very cool. Cool as a cucumber. That's exactly right, guys. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. So i got to be totally honest with you there. I I reckon a 5196 any day of the week would be better than the um, getting a gold Globemaster. That would be a stupid idea. Um, and i got to say, there's the nothing wrong. I actually like the steel Globemaster. It's an amazing, but a bang per buck. <clears throat> I think you've got a nice collection. What would I add to it? Look, maybe I'd, I would add... I wish you had a 58 because the just the, just I don't know I don't know I don't know why I'm saying I just am maybe a speedy well one watch per brand one watch per brand okay well it is actually a nice little collection it is nice it's very nice so well done <clears throat> how did you do I'd give this a seven out of ten six point nine eight and not six point eight nine so almost seven almost seven yeah it's a good little collection it's nice. It's an enthusiast collection. Um, yeah, so that, that's my opinion, guys. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Put some comments below. And remember, I can't survive on Google Ads. I desperately need paid reviews to keep this YouTube show on the road. Subscribe and tell your friends and don't be afraid to get a paid review. 50 US dollars for a paid review. It helps me stay full time on YouTube and I will see you.
in the next one. 50 US dollars paid review. I can't survive on Google Ads. I need your support. And guys, you could also sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay as little as a dollar a month to keep me on YouTube. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co, that's correct. Vintage Watch Co in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co, Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.